you all know that there are satellites orbiting the earth now these satellites provide us with locations of people things places and so on now these satellites have a limited access over certain areas like what happens there are some areas on the earth surface which are not under satellite coverages for example let's take this here this white buildings these are under a satellite coverage so their location is known accurately and the location of this stadium is also known because this is also under a satellite coverage but this tower in between this is not under a satellite coverage so the location of this tower is unknown now how do they calculate or how do they find out the location of this tower well in such a case what happens the locations of the nearby objects places or things is used as a reference to find out the location of the unknown object so let's see how do they find out the location of this tower with the reference of the location of the white buildings and the stadium well we have simplified the image for you you can see that this is the stadium this is the tower in between and this is the white buildings we have named them as a this is the stadium a tower is c and the white buildings as b now we know another information that is the distance between the stadium and the tower and the distance between the tower and the white buildings or you can say we know the ratio of the distances between the stadium and the tower and the tower and the white buildings so that ratio is m is to n so we have written the distance or the ratio of the distance between the stadium and the tower as m and the tower and the white building as n so now let us see their location now we have found out that the coordinates of the stadium is x1 y1 and the coordinates of this building is x2 y2 but this is missing we do not know so let us assume that the coordinates of c that is tower is x comma y now let us construct horizontal and vertical perpendiculars from a b and c here like this we have named these points as r s and q where these perpendiculars are meeting now with the help of the coordinates of a c and b can you tell me the coordinates of q s and r write it well let's start with r you can see that the x coordinate of b and r will be same because they line on the same line so it will be x2 and the y coordinate of c and r will be same because they are lying on the same line here so this will be y in the same way we can find out the coordinates of s s will have the same x coordinate as b and r so x2 and the same y coordinate as a because this is the same line here so y coordinate as y1 similarly we can find out for q q has the same x coordinate as c because this is the same line here so x and the same y coordinate as a and s that is y1 so we have found out the coordinates of r s and q now let's look at that stadium tower and the white buildings as points so the stadium represents a the tower represents c and the white buildings represent b what we have to find out is the actual location of the c so let us do that with the help of r s q look at these two triangles created by a c q and c b and r what do you see well these are the perpendiculars you can say that c is creating a perpendicular by joining this line on the x axis so this is 90 degree and b is also creating a perpendicular to the x axis so this is also 90 so we can say that the angle brc is equal to 
angle CQA what are we doing we are focusing on these two triangles only that is BRC and CQA so in these two triangles we found that angle BRC is equal to angle CQA now what else do we see well you can see that this line is parallel to this line they are perpendiculars now if two lines are parallel and AB is acting as a transversal then we can say that this angle and this angle will be same because they are corresponding angles because if two parallel lines are intersected by a transversal then these angles act as corresponding angles angle ACQ is equal to angle CBR because they are corresponding so we have found out that in these two triangles two angles are same so we can say that the triangle ACQ and the triangle CBR are similar because of angle angle axiom so we can say that triangle AQC is similar to triangle BCR because we have proved the angle angle axiom now let us find out the sides of these two triangles now CQ can you tell me what will be the distance of CQ well you can see that both C and Q have the same x coordinates so we will subtract the y coordinates we will get the distance between C and Q so here you can do y, y, y minus y1 or y1 minus y this will give you the same answer so let us take it as y minus y1 now find BR you can do yourself well we can see that B and R have the same x coordinates so what we'll do we'll just subtract the y coordinates we can do it anyway so we'll write y2 minus y now find out aq and cr well looking at a and q we see that both of them are having the same y coordinates so we'll subtract their x coordinates so x1 minus x and CR looking at C and R we see they are having the same y coordinates so we will subtract their x coordinates x minus x2 so we have successfully found out the sides of these two triangles now if triangle AQC is similar to triangle CRB then the ratio of their sides will also be equal so we can say that AC by BC that is AC by BC is equal to CQ by BR CQ by BR is equal to AQ by CR the ratio of the sides is equal so now let's substitute whatever values we found out in this equation now AC is what M by BC is N is equal to CQ we found out that Y minus Y1 by BR that is Y2 minus Y this is equal to AQ by CR AQ is X1 minus X by CR is X minus X2. So we have substituted the sides by their values we had already found out. So you can see that we have created an equation where M by N, that is the ratio of the distances, is equal to Y minus Y1 by y2 minus y 
and it is also equal to x1 minus x by x minus x2. So now let us solve this to find out the value of x and y. That is what we had to find out. We had to find out the location of that tower which was represented by x and y. So we'll find out the value of x and y from this equation. Now let's take it one by one. Let's take first this one. m by n is equal to y minus y1 by y2 minus y. Let's solve it by cross multiplying. So m into y2 minus y will give me what? n into y minus y1. Let's solve this further. m y2 minus m y will give me n y minus n y1. Now let's bring the common y's together. So we can write m y2. This comes here, so it becomes plus n y1 gives us n y plus m y. We had taken it that side. Or we can write taking y common in this, we can write y m plus n is equal to m y2 plus n y1. Now see, we've got y here. So taking m plus n that side, we'll get the value of y. So y is equal to m y2 plus n y1 whole divided by m plus n. So we have derived how to find out the value of y with the help of m and n. So y is equal to m y2 plus n y1 by m plus n. This will give us the answer for y. Now what about x? For that we need to solve this and this. So let's start doing this and this. So m by n is equal to x1 minus x by x minus x2. Now solving this for x will give us the value for x. So let's solve this. m cross multiplying with x minus x2 is equal to taking n there x1 minus x. Now let's multiply this. mx minus mx2 is equal to nx1 minus nx. Now let's bring nx to this side and mx to that side. So mx plus nx gives us, taking this there, nx1 plus mx2. Now we can take x common from here. So taking x common we get m plus n is equal to, you can write it anyways, nx1 plus mx2 or mx2 plus nx1. So now we've got x here. Taking m plus n there, we'll get the value for x. So x is equal to mx2 plus nx1 whole divided by m plus n. So here we have derived the value for x as well. So you can see that x is equal to mx2 plus nx1 by m plus n. So we have successfully derived the value for x and y. Well, this is the internal section formula where you can find out x with mx2 plus nx1 by m plus n and y by my2 plus ny1 by m plus n, where m and n are the ratio of the distances.